praise God for what we've heard. Uh, what I've felt led to share was the same as the message that we heard in the beginning, that uh, how marvelous that grace that caught my falling soul, that we were plunging to death and God held out his hand and rescued us. And it was related to verse 1 where it's in Romans 8 that says, Therefore there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and death. And as we heard, the, um, the first word in the chapter is therefore, so it's pointing to something before it. Whenever there's a therefore in the Bible, we look and see what it's there for and by going backwards and uh, reading. And so we read about Paul, who was a man in a struggle, who was basically in a struggle that there was no way out of. It was like he was, the way I saw it, uh, was he was in prison. He was trapped. No matter how hard he tried, he couldn't get out of this prison. And then he ends the chapter with the fact that he was rescued. Thanks be to the Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Who was going to set me free? Jesus. God did through Jesus. And so it's like he was saying, I was trapped. I was in prison. I couldn't get out. I was under God's wrath and condemnation. Uh, there was no hope for me. I I'd wanted to be better. I wanted to overcome the sin. I wanted to be able to please God. But I saw I was trapped. I couldn't do it. I was in prison. There was no hope forever. Forever going to be in this miserable state. And then God did it through Christ Jesus. So I saw, um, I was meditating on it, I saw a lot of similarities to this part of the Bible from Romans 7 to 8 with a, someone who's been trapped somewhere, uh, for example, slavery or, uh, or in prison, and then all of a sudden one day they're free unexpectedly because somebody had mercy on them. And, um, and so I see that, can, like, I, uh, can you imagine a man who's been in prison for years on death row and then he was let free one day? Uh, the, the feeling of the unreal feeling that you would have there's this has happened I, I was I've read some I've heard some stories about it people that are on death row for a crime that they didn't didn't commit and then all of a sudden some proof comes up some technology DNA or like some gun ballistics or something uh, and decades later they're set free and it's amazing uh, all at once they thought they thought they're gonna die and all at once they're breathing fresh air uh, outside of prison walls that's basically what happened to us in Christ. We were plunging to death and God held out his hand. And so I see that Paul was writing about his experience of that, that same thing, that he was plunging. He was trapped. Uh, he was um, on his way to God's eternal condemnation. And then Jesus came and rescued him. And so uh, the Lord put it on my heart to meditate on that fact more, that I, I was the same. I'm the same as Paul. I was in that prison too. I think because I grew up in the church, uh, a lot of times it's easy to not feel like that. Um, because as soon as I found out I was a sinner, I knew that there was Jesus who could save me. <laughs> so I wasn't like uh, Paul who had that struggle before knowing about Jesus. Uh, I was told, you're a sinner, but Jesus is here. He forgives you. So it's very easy for me to take it for granted. Um, but over uh, when I was younger, I did have thoughts of doubt. And I and I was I would think of, um, what if I'm, before I understood understood God's mercy and love fully, I would think, what if I've missed something? What if there's some point of doctrine that's, that I'm missing that uh, some, I mean, there's so many de denominations of Christianity. I know Jesus is the one, but what if I'm picking the wrong denomination and I have some point of doctrine wrong? Or uh, what if I'm not practicing something? And so I, I, I think... Uh, what if I'm too much of a sinner? Uh, what if I haven't repented? I come to them in my life and there's something I haven't repented of. And then when I was younger, before I knew God's love as a father for me, I struggled with these things. That God's, he's going to send me to the lake of fire forever if I'm off on something. And I would get scared that I have to pay for my sins forever. But over time, God showed me his uh, love and mercy. And, um, and so I can... Uh, I have rest now, but I'm happy that I did go through that experience because it, it gave me a little taste of that prison to know what it was like without Jesus, uh, that, um, that he, I was plunging to death. Basically what I was feeling at that moment, that's what, it, what I really was before Jesus. Um, I was plunging to death and I was going to pay for my sins forever um, and how happy I should be that he, his hand of grace caught my falling soul. And uh, I read a beautiful testimony of a man named David Brainerd. He was a missionary in the 1700s, and he kept a journal. He never meant, he never intended for anybody to read it, but he uh, wrote of his testimony about finding God's grace after struggling for so long with trying to earn it. And um, 
the Romans 8 1 says there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus he didn't know what it was he didn't know what it was to be set free the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and death he didn't know that that freedom that has come the the fact that there's no condemnation he felt the condemnation on himself because he didn't see the that Jesus uh, the rescuing that's in Jesus and so I I read through it and I paraphrased a couple of paragraphs um, and uh, because it was written in Old English and not that easy to understand, so I did my best, and uh, I'll just read it, and hopefully you can be blessed by it um, as I was. Um, so David Brainerd. <clears throat> One morning as I was walking along in a lonely place, I saw at once that my efforts to secure salvation for myself were all in vain. I stood still, finding myself totally lost and seeing now that it was forever impossible to save myself. I was sure that my state forever was forever miserable no matter what I did, and I was astonished I'd never saw this before. I now saw that all my prayers and fasting didn't lay the least obligation on God to give me His grace, and that there was not the least good in them because they weren't performed from any love to God. I continued like this for days, and then at once God opened up an amazing revelation to my soul, a new inward beautiful view of God that I never saw before. I stood still and admired Him. It was very different from any other thought I had of God before, and my soul rejoiced with joy unspeakable to see such a glorious divine being. I was so captivated with his excellency, loveliness, greatness, and all his other perfections that I forgot about myself. And everything started appearing in a different aspect than what it used to, and I saw the way of salvation opened up to me in Jesus. I was amazed that I had not stopped my own efforts to secure salvation for myself a long time ago and complied with this blessed and excellent way before. If I could now be saved in any of the ways I had tried before, my whole soul would have refused. I wondered, I wondered why the whole world didn't see and run after this way of salvation entirely by the righteousness of Christ. So this man was a miserable prisoner, just like Paul, and he struggled and struggled and struggled, and then God revealed to him the mercy in Christ Jesus, to what it is to be in Christ Jesus, and the condemnation was lifted. There's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. No more guilt, no more laboring to secure our own salvation, just a freedom in Christ, not only to be free from the guilt of sin, but also the power of it. Because if you go on a few verses, it says, uh, so that the, right, the requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but in the spirit. So now not only are we free from God's wrath and the punishment and penalty of sin and the guilt of sin in our conscience, but we're also free from the power of sin, that God can enable us to live a life free for him, to live for him. Um, that, that's a beautiful, we know the word gospel. The gospel basically means good news, but the good news isn't only that God isn't, uh, is, has forgiven me for my sins, but it's now that we can live to please God and actually accomplish it by the power of His Spirit. We can actually be successful at it, that He can um, change us from what we are. Uh, there's an um, illustration we've heard before um, that it's if a, a, a dad tells his son not to go near a pit and his son disobeys and falls into it, his dad um, can forgive him easily. So, sure, son, I forgive you, but what if, uh, what if he doesn't save him from it? Uh, <laughs> what if he just walks off and says, son, I forgive you for disobeying me. See you later. Um, but God is a loving father who has not just freed us from the, um, the fact that we've disobeyed and the, pe the penalty of it, but he helps us out of the pit and he helps us um, to be successful at walking again in, in obedience to him. So, praise God for that gospel. Um, so we've heard in this church many times that the one way we can grow in our love for God is by meditating and remembering how much we've been forgiven um, and how serious our sin was. And so that's, let's meditate on how we were plunging to our death and God held out his hand that we were in prison, doomed for eternal wrath, not a prison that we could be saved from by death, but a, a prison forever. We were plunging and he held his hand out. Praise God. <laughs>